Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm Krista Saxon, I am not Kristen Salvavold, I'm just using her Zoom account. I wanted to, oops, talk about prospecting. And after being in this business for almost five years in May, I've learned a lot about reaching out to people, some of the things that I, you should be doing, some of the things that you shouldn't be doing, and just how to authentically reach out to people. And, you know, I know it can be intimidating. You know, maybe you just joined and you're interested in the opportunity, but maybe you have no idea what to say to somebody. Maybe you've been in this business for a while and you're just not getting the type of responses that you're wanting. Maybe you've been in the business for a while and you still just kind of feel at a loss for how to reach out to somebody to get an effective response, whether yes or no. There's nothing that's perfect, but this system um, is developed from Bob Heilig and I've been going through the Leadership Legacy Academy and this just really hit home with me. And what I love about it is it's simple, it's duplicatable, it is easy for anybody to follow if you follow it, okay? So we're gonna talk about, again, prospecting. So reaching out to people. And there's kind of four key areas. Who, how, what, and why. So we're just going to go through these quickly tonight. So who? Who should you talk to? You know, it's easy to, when we think of, okay, who am I going to reach out to? It's easy to think of our fa close family, our friends, our best friends, um, people that we, you know, talk to on a daily basis. Or it's easy to think about those people that desperately you know, could benefit from these products that desperately need the products or the business. Maybe somebody just lost their job. Maybe somebody's health is just going downhill and you think like, oh, they would be so perfect. They need this. Those aren't necessarily the people that are going to jump on board, especially right away. So when you're thinking about who you should talk to, don't prejudge anybody. Think about the people that you know that have influence over other people. Think about those people that, you know, they post something on Facebook and they get a hundred likes and a hundred comments or just one of those people that like, when you get on social media, you think like, oh, I need to check what they're doing because they like have a really strong following. Um, somebody like that people that have influence over other people. Think about the people who are already successful in what they're doing. You know, maybe they have a business, maybe they're just in a business that they're just really successful in. Maybe they've started an at-home business. Maybe they've been in network marketing before. Maybe they're currently in a network marketing business, but just not Plexus. Don't prejudge anybody but think outside the box. If there's somebody that you're scared to talk to about Plexus, that's probably a good indication that you need to talk to that person, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have a perfect um, script or timeline, but I want you just to kind of just have a piece of paper and just brain dump. Think about everybody that you know. And there is a resource in virtual office called leads you didn't know you had or leads you didn't know you have. And that is a link in virtual office under resource library that is going to help you kind of jog your memory of everybody that you know. So that's who you should talk to. How should you talk to them? Okay, so the best thing that you can do is set up an in-person meeting with it, with someone because you can be face-to-face, -face, you can see facial expression, they can see your, um, hear your tone of voice, see your posture, see how excited you are about 
the business opportunity and about the products. If you cannot do an in-person, you could do a phone call. The phone still exists and not just to text. You can actually call someone on these things. So you could call somebody and just have, you know, say, hey, like, I'd love to set up a, a time to chat with you when works best for you. Um, you could do, if that doesn't work, you could do a voice message, you know, on text or on Facebook Messenger. Not everybody has Facebook Messenger or they don't always check it. So just keep that in mind. Um, but again, it at least allows them to hear your tone of voice. Marco Polo is also a great app to use because it's like little short videos that you can send back and forth if you have somebody that you're connected with. Um, the other thing is a Zoom call. You could jump on a Zoom call if that works. And then kind of the last resort would be to text or a Facebook text. And I say that, you know, or email. Um, I say that just because, you know, it's really hard to hear authenticity and to hear your passion behind words in a text message. And it's really easy to get into the habit of copying and pasting messages. And we don't want to do that. We want our messages to be authentic and personal to every single person that we're talking to. So you know those kind of messages that you've received that you're like, yep, she probably sent this to 100 people today because it's very um, unpersonal, impersonal, inauthentic. So try as you might to schedule an in-person or at least a phone call or at least a voice message. So what should you say? This is kind of where we like put on the brakes and we get a little bit nervous and we get tongue tied and we get, you know, the sweaty palms and the fast beating hearts of like, oh my goodness. Okay. So I have a list of people, but like, what on earth do I say to them? First of all, we do not want to be the expert. Um, when you are talking to somebody, you want to say as little as possible. The less you say, the more you make. So I'm going to kind of go into that in just a minute, but Plexus has created a sharing system and there's just a little graphic that you can see what it looks like. And this again is in your virtual office under resource library and it's called the sharing system. And this gives you a few different scripts for different types of people, people that you know really well, people that you've just been become acquainted with, different types of relationships. So check this out in your virtual office. And then the other link is actually from Bob Heilig. And these are five proven scripts for prospecting on social media that work in any situation. So I've been using some of these scripts and it's kind of, there's like different situations. So like if you want to do a referral, if you want to just be direct, if you want to use like a market research, if you maybe did it wrong in the past, maybe you've reached out to them before and you kind of did it the wrong way. The, um, these are scripts that like he has come up with that have worked in all of his different network marketing businesses. And um, again, they're very short and sweet. You know, you want to make a message in like, if you're going to text, you're going to want to make it in like a paragraph or two. If you are voice messaging, you want to make it in like that one minute chunk that it gives you. You don't want to make it a several minutes long. Otherwise people aren't going to listen. Or if they see a big, you know, message pop up and it's like this long and they have to scroll up and up and up to see it, they're not going to want to read that whole thing. So the less you say is better. And we're just trying to kind of get that like conversation back and forth going and to see like where their interest is. So what you want to make sure, sorry, I'm like fighting off a cold, so I'm, I sound a little stuffy. What you want to make sure is that you have an invitation and a presentation, and those do not go in the same time. 
So what you want to do is, you know, when you're kind of going back and forth and you get to that point where you're talking about the business or you're talking about Plexus, you want to invite them to watch a video, to an event, maybe a seven day challenge, to try your product, whatever it is, you don't want to invite them and like attach a video in that same message. You want them to be different. You are the one inviting, but the presentation comes from anyone but you. It comes from something else. So again, it comes from a third party tool. So a video, um, you know, an opportunity call, a sample, a testimony, um, a seven day trial group, something like that, or, you know, like a, the gut glam resource hub page. Just make sure that you are not combining these into the same time frame. You want to send it, you know, you invite them, let them respond and then send them the third party tool. So some examples of third party tools, you know, an opportunity or product video, there's, we have opportunity calls every Monday on our Plexus Ambassador community page. Product videos we have in your virtual office, or if you go to YouTube, YouTube has a ton of videos on there. If you need help, um, myself or your sponsor is more than willing to send you the, um, some of those third party tools, the videos, I mean, a recorded call samples of your product, um, your website. I wouldn't necessarily always send that, but it still is a good, you know, they can still check it out or a brochure, a product catalog or the digital catalog, um, a training call. Sometimes we do product training calls. Um, another expert call or group chat. So um, maybe you have like a group chat that you have started or that your upline has started for potential, something like that. A live or recorded presentation. Again, we have recording or we have live presentations every Monday on the Ambassador Community page, and you can always send them that recording afterwards. A uh, virtual party, we're doing these for ambassadors, so Facebook launch parties are a good one, uh, or like an online sip and see, sit and see an in-home meeting or physical meeting, and then like a Facebook group. So like the Gut Glam group is a really good one. So these are all examples of third-party tools that you can use. So it's kind of like a stair step when you're, talk when you're thinking about this. So like you are initially prospecting and then you send them a third-party tool. Based on their response, you'll kind of know how they respond. Then you can jump up to the next step of a three-way call and you can do this with like your sponsor and upline um, and jump on a three-way call or a three-way chat with them give them that third-party validation then you could invite them to an opportunity presentation or um, a opportunity meeting type of a thing and then you could invite them to like a weekly training that you have or weekly meetings like the Plexus Ambassador community page again is going to be the best resource for this because they do things weekly along with our team pages. They done, um, our team pages and leaders tend to do different trainings, not weekly, but close. So it's kind of the steps. So you kind of just want to like see how they're responding. If it's kind of like, great, thanks. And you say, okay, well, what did you, what did you like best? And they don't really respond, then it's probably a good indication that they're not interested yet. But if they start to ask questions, then you can kind of start to go into these um, stair step ideas. And if you have questions along the way, please do not hesitate to ask your sponsor or upline. Um, so why should you do it this way? You know, you can go in and you can message people however you want, but if you're new and you've never done this before, chances are you're not going to know exactly the type of messages to say at those times. 
Um, you know, but again, like we don't want to sound like the expert. We don't want to be the expert. We don't want to say too much. I've definitely done that, especially at the beginning when I first started. We want this process to be as simple and as duplicatable as possible. So if you can show somebody that all it is is, you know, inviting to an event or inviting to a prospect and then giving them um, a tool to watch or invite them to a challenge or an event or a sample, like that's duplicatable and anyone can do that. If you become the expert and you give them all the information, they're going to be like, whoa, that's great. Like, I'm glad you can do this, but I have, I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the desire to do that. So systems create success. And this type of a system helps you to be duplicatable, helps you to give it to your downline and let them give it to their new ambassadors. And um, it just creates this domino effect. And you're not having to type out all the information. You're not having to do all of the work. It's there for you. So don't be the expert. The less you say, the more you make. And, you know, it's just this process of sorting, like who's interested, who's not, who's ready, who's not quite ready, who's just not going to be ready, who's just, you know, out there to get you. Um, and so that's kind of the, the four-step system. So what I want you to know is that this business just like life in general is a roller coaster. And then I mean, some night, some weeks, some months, you're just going to be on the highest of highs. And then some months you're going to be in the lowest of lows. Some people are going to tell you yes, like crazy. And then other times you're, you're going to feel like you're going to, you're just getting so many no's or people are joining, but then other people are dropping off and people are turning off their subscription or people are just quitting on you. Like that's the nature of this business. And what you have to realize right from the beginning is stay off of the emotional roller coaster. Like just let it go. Like just know that a no is not a no for like, isn't like a self-reflection of you. And the months that you have a lot of momentum are great. The months that you don't have a lot of momentum, totally fine. You're just going to ride that and just keep moving forward. So the, early, the sooner you can learn this, the better, okay? And then just lastly, network marketing is just that. It's work. You know, I can say that it's easy, but it's still work. I can say that it's simple, but it's still you putting in the time to reach out, to prospect, to follow up, follow up, follow up till you're blue in the face. And, you know, if it's 15 minutes one day, great. If it's two hours one day, awesome. If it's nothing for a day, that's fine. But just know that like you do have to work. This is still a job. Like it's still work. And you know, if you want to be paid like a hobby, you can work it like a hobby. If you want to be paid like a business, you can work it like a business. It is up to you. But I do want just to be, you know, give you those realistic expectations that it is work. You do have to reach out. You can't just post on Facebook. You do have to message people and use the scripts that we've given and provided. But I will tell you that it is the biggest blessing and it's an opportunity that you will never get anywhere else. I say that, you know, I, I came from a position where I was working eight to five, eight to six nights sometimes weekends. I was on someone else's schedule. I had to ask for vacation time. It was just awful. And the thought of going back to that is what drives me harder 
to work harder in this business because I am doing this on my own time, in my own way. I can take vacations whenever I want. I can work when I want, when I can. I don't have to ask for sick time or pay time off or vacation time. So it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Um, but this is just, you know, kind of that beginning stage of reaching out and how do you reach out? <coughs> if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a great night.